just before we were sharing communion, I felt the Lord sort of speaking a little bit to me and I was asking, is that just for me or is that for, for others as well? And I feel there's something to, to share. So I'm going to, um, we're not going to do what we were going to do, um, but instead I just want to share something. And Guy is tidying up our communion table. And actually, Guy, don't tidy it up too much. Um, it's wonderful as it is. Thank you so much. Um, as we finish communion, we have lots of leftover broken bits that didn't quite get needed, that didn't quite get used. And as we were worshipping before the service, uh, worshipping earlier on in the service, I was reminded of these words. This is just after Jesus has done one of his spectacular miracles. All of Jesus' miracles are spectacular, but some of them were on a bigger scale, weren't they? This is the feeding of the 5,000, 5,000 men, so plus women and children as well. So 5,000 plus people have been fed with just uh, one boy's, uh, one, one boy's uh, lunchbox. Jesus has multiplied that food. And then at the end of this miracle, it's these words that I felt God was reminding me of. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the, his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. And what I felt God was speaking to me, and I'll be honest with you, this is that I need to hear this morning. This is something that, that is for me, but it's for others as well. So I want to bring just a sort of word of, I don't know, pastoral encouragement, maybe. There are parts of our lives, each one of us, that are broken. There are parts that aren't quite right. There are parts that aren't the way we'd want them to be. There are parts of our history. There are parts of our present. There will be parts of our future which aren't good or which are broken or which aren't how we'd want them to be. And it can be easy to think that well, the good thing happened in the past. The miracle's over. The big spectacular thing has happened. Sometimes it can feel as though life has just sort of moved on past that. And we're just sort of left over with the, with the broken leftovers. Sometimes the things in our life that feel most real and most pressing are the things that we really wish weren't there. The things that we wish had never been there. The things that we wish we didn't have to live with. What are the broken bits? The bits that could just sort of be left over and scattered to one side, blow away in the wind, and we'll try and ignore them and pretend they never happened. What are the broken bits for you? What are the broken bits for me? Truth be told, I've had a pretty rubbish week. This week, in a number of different ways, has been, been a bit lame. It's not been the worst week of my life by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not been very nice. There's been a number of things about it that haven't been very pleasant. I didn't desperately want to come to church this morning. I didn't have the freedom to not come to church this morning. You, you may have done. I didn't. That's good. That's, hel that's, that's healthy. That's helpful, I think. It's good to be around people. But I didn't particularly want to be. Because there are, there are things. There are things going on for me right now. There are things in my past. There are things that sort of I'm working on, working through, which feel a little bit like a broken bit. Feel a little bit like the bit that wasn't needed. Lots of things about my life that I can say, yeah, God's used that. God's done something with that. God's blessing that. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, lots of parts of my life that sort of I think are worth feeding someone else with. Also a chunk of bits and the bits that maybe foremost front of my mind at the minute are the bits that feel a little bit broken. The bits that feel like, what could anything possibly good be done with that? How could anything useful come from that? What could, what could be done with this? That's going to be true of all of us to greater or lesser degrees, those, those broken bits. And what is it that Jesus says? He doesn't just say, fantastic, the miracle's been done. Praise, praise my father, this is fantastic. Now, all go back about your daily business. No, he, he takes care and he takes concern. Gather the pieces that are left over. There's way more food than they could have eaten. They all had their fill. They could have just gone home happy, but Jesus doesn't want to waste anything. Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. I want to encourage Jesus wants to be wasted. There's no pain in your life that Jesus wants to be wasted. 
Those of you who are few, here a few weeks ago, a week and a Malcolm's father had spent some time in a prison. And that, that, was, that was a bit of a shameful thing for their family. That was a hard thing. That was something that, that sort of wasn't pleasant. They wouldn't have chosen for that to be part of their family's life, part of their family's history. And yet, she, as a grown woman, has now worked in that exact prison, working with female offenders who have been in there, and the impact she's able to have in their life by saying, my grandma was an inmate here. Something they wouldn't have chosen, something they wouldn't have wanted. I was so blessed by that story. Yeah. But God didn't waste it. God didn't waste that pain or that hurt or that wrong or that whatever language you want to use. He used it. I can say from my own life that the hardest bits, the rubbishest bits, the bits that I really wish I hadn't gone through, God has used in so many different ways. Bits that at the time felt not like this, but let's take it one step further. Let's tear it up a few more times. Then let's whack it in a blender and blitz it up a little bit farther. That's how broken it felt. And yet God can still use it. God wants to gather up those pieces. Notice that he doesn't just say, take them. Each of you take a broken bit and take it away and give it to someone. Gather it together. Scoop them up. Bring them together. Friends, sometimes it can be really tempting. And it was my plan this morning. My plan this morning was to come and kind of fake it a little bit. Pretend that I was in sort of the, the normal happy mood that I normally am. You know, I'm, I'm generally a happy, in a, in a good place kind of person. My plan this morning was to pretend that I was, because I probably could have got away with it. But actually, there's something good about coming together, being honest, saying, today I feel more like a broken bit of bread than a beautiful bloomer loaf ready to be put out warm and fresh on the table. Today I feel a little bit meh. Gather them together. Gather all of these things together. Fill up the baskets so they can be together. And when, when that comes together, not just so that we can all have a sort of pat ourselves on the back there, there sort of sympathy fest, so that we can come and be real, take off the masks, be who we are, come together as God's people, and share. And through that, there'll be ways in which God will allow those different things not to be wasted, not to be broken, not to be sort of left, but instead to be used. It might be that you have some pain that I need to borrow, in the words of that famous song. It may be that we need to share a little bit, be a little bit real and vulnerable with each other so that these broken bits aren't wasted. So where have you come to church from this morning? How are you? Honestly, we've heard this morning, I shared earlier on, of a family who are struggling at the minute, who will be grieving at the moment. Won't be the only people grieving. There'll be others with different griefs. Grief of losing someone. Grief of having part of you lost. Grief of a relationship that's broken or breaking. There'll be all kinds of different grief in this room. There'll be all kinds of different anxiety in this room. Worries and stresses and concerns and not quite sure that didn't pan out, this might not pan out, this doesn't feel like it's going to be okay. There'll be all kinds of different health concerns in this room, physical health and mental health, emotional well-being. There'll be depression in this room. There might be eating disorders in this room. There might be those who self-harm in this room or watching online. Those are things that it's okay to talk about. There'll be all kinds of broken bits in this room and beyond this room. And maybe a room like this is just far too big to share those kinds of things. Yeah, I get that. Maybe instead the way that that needs to be shared, that those gathered broken pieces need to be brought together into the basket is around your own dining table today. Maybe it's around the table in your own life group. Maybe it's to go up to someone when we're having a coffee after the service today and say, you know what? We're not doing great. Could we talk? I believe there's something beautiful and powerful when God's people come together and are honest. When we're real. 
when we don't just put on our Sunday best and pretend. When we come honestly how we are. Because ultimately, sometimes I need to be led back to Jesus. What I need is not you. What I need is him. What I need is not for me to know that you love me. What I need is to know that he loves me. What I need is him. I'm not just talking about a a human psychological impact of people sharing their concerns and sort of being in it together. That's a very real thing. It's part of the grace of God given to our lives that, that we can have that impact on each other. But ultimately what we need is not each other. What we need is him. After this miracle, which understandably caused quite a bit of a stir, and after Jesus said, I don't want any part of it to be wasted, then he gets a chance to explain, and he, he goes on this great sort of long uh, sermon where he describes himself as the bread of life. And at the very end of that, we read this. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Do you hear that? Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Sometimes the the broken bits, the rubbish bits, can feel like a little part of us that's died. A little part of us that's no longer full of life and vibrant and exciting and whole. We feel a little bit dead. Do you want to know where life comes from? It comes from Jesus comes from him who who died and even though he died he had life came back to life so much life constantly poured into him and flowing out of him that even death couldn't end him unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you he's saying unless you come to me unless you let my life be your life unless you let my flesh and my blood be what fills you unless you let my death stand for your death then you cannot have life and then he says whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and i will raise them up at the last day for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and i in them just as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so the one who feeds on me will live because of me This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. What do those words mean? My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. There are those who have taken in these words a a, a doctrine that says that when we take communion, uh, the bread actually turns into Jesus' flesh because his flesh is real food. And the, 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 the wine or the juice actually turns into his blood because his blood is real drink. That's where some of that doctrine comes from. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what Jesus is saying here. What he's saying is that there is, there is a bread more real than physical bread. There is wine more real than physical wine. We can sometimes think that the most real things, the most, the things with the greatest substance are the things that we can touch and taste and interact with the physical world around us. That's the biggest reality that there is. And then we have our own spiritual lives as part of that. What Jesus is pointing us to is something very different from that. That the most real thing is the spiritual realm. The most real, the most important, the biggest thing, the thing that we need the most is what is in spirit. Is what is beyond this world that we can touch and taste and interact with. And so when we have physical need, we go for physical food. When we have a deeper need than that, when we have a bigger need, when we are aware of our own brokenness or our own insufficiency or the parts of us that are just dragging us back, when we have a soul need, a spirit need, we need spiritual food. And that's only found in the person of Jesus. What I need on weeks like the week I'm having and on days like today, what I need every single day, every single moment, every single year, is to feed on Jesus, to come back to him, to trust him, to rely on him, to look to him. Sometimes 
I need people to guide me back to him. So I get lost or or I run away. So how are you today? How are you doing? How are you feeling? What's big in your mind? What have you been focused on this week? Is it good? Is it bad? Jesus is better. Is it hard? Jesus is stronger. I just want to encourage you that whether you feel as though your life is whole or like a broken little bit, left over, passed away, show left town, miracles happened and moved on and you're left, the little broken bit left behind. Wherever you are, gather it together. Bring it to Jesus. Feed on him. Pray. Read your Bible. Go for a walk. Phone up a friend. Whatever it is that's going to lead you back to Jesus. Help you to feed on him again. Lord Jesus, we need you. I need you. I'm sorry for the masks that I put on and the pretenses I put up. I'm sorry for pretending I'm better than I am. For doing better than I am. Thank you that you aren't only interested in the exciting and the big. You're interested in the little and the leftovers. So, Lord, I choose to bring you today my broken pieces. Rather than you. Lord Jesus, would you minister to us in the rest of the time we have together this morning and beyond?